Hello again, football fans. Welcome to another edition of Friday Night Varsity Flashback. We are in week 10. We are solidly in the middle of conference play. We've got some games for the top spots, for the middle spots, for position, for playoff hopes. We got a bunch of good ones tonight. We got the four of them for you. And we're going to get started, Dan. South Columbus, East Bladen. This was a good game. Since 2008, East Bladen has not lost at home. And we were talking in the preview about the running game would be the great equalizer. Less than two minutes into the game, Ron Antonio Stanley found the corner for a touchdown to put the Stallions up 6-0. It was ground early. They went up 8-0 there. And then East Bladen, though, they managed to keep it close through three quarters. They, uh, they even things up early on a Duran Bruni pass to A.J. McCoy. They went 21-21 going into the fourth quarter. They actually got their only lead of the game late in the second quarter on one of very few South Columbus miscues. A Stanley fumble was scooped by Saquon Johnson, who rumbled 80 yards for the six-pack in the score. That was the only time they were leading the game. Stanley bookended his evening, getting in the end zone with less than two minutes to play. He finished with 219 yards on the night on 24 carries, plus scored on a 45-yard touchdown. Jamal Hemingway excuse me, added 106 yards. That offense ran for almost 400 yards tonight, Dan. It's it, like you said before, this was which tandem of running backs is going to get it pulled off because Antonio Merchantson and AJ McCoy at East Bladen are no slouches here. Right. This was the South Columbus offensive line, and this was South Columbus getting a couple stops in the second half. Uh, Chuck Carey was at that game. He's like, my shootout turned into a defensive battle, and I don't know how it happened. So, uh, big win for South Columbus. They are legitimate now. Uh, if they don't break into the top 10 in the state after this, I don't know what is going on. So. I agree. Well, let's stay in the Waccamaw, and let's go to a game that we thought would be a shootout, and it actually ended up being a shootout. Yeah, that was uh, South Brunswick at North Brunswick tonight uh, over in Leland, and uh, big first half for South Brunswick, and then uh, Alex Pelham returns the second half kickoff. It's 30-6 to six Cougars. You think this thing's over, and then Chris Hamilton, he only completed nine passes tonight. Four of them were for touchdowns, though. Uh, he finished uh, nine completions for 232 yards, but... Uh, in the end, South Brunswick decided uh, we're going to give the ball to Marcus Hankins, and he's going to run, and he's going to run, and he's going to run some more. 19 carries, 323 yards. Yes, let me say that again. 323 yards. Uh, three touchdowns rushing, one touchdown receiving. South Brunswick pulls away 51-26. to That keeps them right on South Columbus's tails in the conference. Well, let's go to the Mideastern. Hoggard, they need to get on track, get that second win. They're looking to get to that three-win barrier. What happened there? Uh, that's uh, Rose at Hoggard, and it was homecoming tonight at Hoggard, and Javon Genright was uh, the homecoming king, the running back slash quarterback slash wide receiver slash whatever you want to call him for the Vikings, and uh, he lived up to it tonight. It was uh, Jen Wright. He uh, got the first touchdown of the game, a little swing pass from Christian Poveromo. That gets the touchdown, um, but really after that, it was uh, it was the Hoggard defense, and the Vikings defense has been good all year. Tonight, they got uh, quite a few stuffs. Uh, Billy Vaughn busts in the backfield, blocks a field goal. That's the one of two blocked field goals on the night for the Vikings. Um, they slammed the door on fourth and goal on Rose in the second half. Rose had the ball four times with a chance to tie this game and did not score. Huge win for the Vikings. Big momentum for them coming down the stretch. They're, uh, they've got a chance to spoil some seasons now. Oh, absolutely they do. But we knew that Hoggard's defense was their strong suit. Oh, yeah. And they, you know, they just couldn't get over the edge. That South Columbus game was 8-7. to seven. You know, mm -hmm. th their defense has kept them in games. Finally, their defense does enough to actually allow them to win. They get two scores and do so. Yeah, like I said, they played to what they have to do, and, uh, and they got it. So that takes us to the other Mideastern battle tonight. And uh, apparently it was a full house today over at Legion. Oh, it was packed. This is the game I went to. And let me tell you about atmosphere. Both sides were packed. Both sides had their student sections with their bodies painted. This is a battle of two th teams that are five and three, trying to get to six and three. For Laney, a win would have kept them on pace with New Bern for that showdown next week. But as we get into the game, it was all New Hanover's defense early. Their secondary came out knowing Laney was going to pass, and they were ready for every pass. They were all over the place. Two picks early in that second, early in that first half, I'm sorry, in the second quarter especially, going up on Tevin Clay. It looked like Sheehan was getting a little comfortable throwing the jump ball to Clay. He was victimized twice on those jump balls into multiple coverage. But then that New Hanover offense was right there to back him up. You know, uh, Devontae Jones, on the third play of the game, opening drive on a short field, he pounds one in from two yards out, they go up. And then Daquan Barnes, the, absolutely the catch of the night. Check this out right here. Reaching out with his left hand, one hand, cruises in the rest of the way. Easy touchdown. They're up 14-0 at that point. The fans are all about it. 
they're, they look like they can't be stopped. Laney goes down and gets a touchdown, and right again, New Hanover responds. Bates Taylor avoids a rush somehow, drops one in right here to Ian McFarland. They go up 20 to 8 at half, but then the craziness really started in the second half. A couple penalties by New Hanover got Laney down close. Late in the third quarter, they put one in, get within a score. They end up taking the lead in the fourth quarter. New Hanover has to come back now, down 22-20. They score with two minutes and three seconds to go to go up 26-22. They hold on and win it from there. They survive. Bates Taylor, 22 of 29 for 217 tonight. Barnes, like you said, had that amazing catch. He finished with nine for 118 in that score. And Jones added 88 on the ground. He got rewarded twice for his efforts. And Sheehan went over 200 yards again for the sixth straight week. Clay and Andrews both over 100, but it's in a losing effort. This is, what, this is exactly what you said was going to happen on Wednesday in the preview show was New Hanover's the most physical team they had faced all year, and they were just going to keep hitting them and keep hitting them and keep hitting them. And that's where Laney, Laney got down to the goal line a couple times and either couldn't score or turned it over or whatever. They yeah. score one more time down there in the red zone, they win this game. But like, you, like right. I said, you said before, New Hanover's going to hit them hard. Can right. they hit them back? And it was just a little short. And one of the key plays in that was right before the half, a little over over a minute to go, fourth and goal from the one, Laney gets stuffed, pushed back, they get no points out of it, that ends up being really the difference in the game. Yep, like I said, but great win for New Hanover, gets them right back on track. Absolutely, well let's real quickly look at all the other scores from around the area. In the Mideastern, the one game we didn't get to tonight, New Bern holds court against Ashley, they win 63 to nothing, their season is continuing just the way they had planned it. Whiteville, big over East West Bladen, 42-14. to 14. That was one of the more intriguing ones in our picks. Uh, that one, that was for Quan Thompson right there. He, uh, he jumped out early. There was an 86-yard touchdown early in the game, kind of got the Wolfpack spurred on, uh, and then an easy win the rest of the way. East Duplin wins again, 49-21 over Swansboro. Topso pitches a shutout, 23 to nothing tonight. St. Paul's over East Columbus, 20-8. 20, 20 That's a big one for the division right there. That is a big one right there. That keeps St. Paul's on top. And we got James Keenan, 49-6 over Midway. Pinder, 32-12 over Union. That was a battle of two one-loss teams, and that really keeps Pinder in the race there. Wallace Rose Hill, 62-3. They continue to roll, and... Really, lots of good games tonight for a lot of good positioning. It was, uh, I think a lot of things got shuffled out tonight. Um, the last two weeks, there's going to be some minor movement, but I think after tonight, we kind of know who's going to be hot coming in, who's yeah. going to have to fight their way into the playoffs from here. And for all that information on who needs to do what from here on out, check back Wednesday. We're going to preview week 11. we got a lot of good games in week 11 also. Come back for that. Also, be sure to tune in to StarNewsVarsity.com whenever you want. That's a 24-hour website, I promise you folks. It's updated. You'll have all the key facts you need to know there. So check it out, guys.